Hallelujah. I hope you have joy in your heart as you're here in the presence of the Lord. And if something is bothering you this morning, I pray that the joy of the Lord that is in here fills you by the time you leave. Amen.
Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We serve a great God. Yes, he's a big God. How great. Great are you, Lord. Greatly to be praised. That's what David said. He said, the Lord is so great. He is so great. He's greatly to be praised, to be adored, to be lifted up, to be exalted. And it is because of him that we are who we are, because he's the I am. And we'll read that just this morning. What a wonderful thing. Uh, but so good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. So good to have each and every one of you. Happy new month. Happy October. Thank you for those of you connected online as well. We're so glad to have you. Well, this morning, I'll get right with it. Uh, what we love to do is start off by just breaking bread. You know, when we gather together as family, you know what we do? We try to eat together. We dine together. So I thank God for our wonderful ushers, those who love to serve, as they pass out the emblems of our Lord's broken body and his precious blood that was shed. And if you're online, it's very simple. You can be part of us. It's all symbolic, right? We will pray over these emblems. So you can do the same. Go grab a piece of bread from your counter or wherever you have it. You know, get a little cup of, 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 of light juice or some water if you don't have any juice. And uh, we will pray over it as we dine together, those of us who are here and those who are remote. It's so wonderful. How good and pleasant, yes, it is, when we dwell, brethren, to dwell together and eat together in unity. We do this, the Bible says, in Luke chapter 22, verse 19. And he, that's Jesus, took the bread, and when he had given thanks, oh, I love that thanksgiving aspect of it. We have to have hearts of gratitude all the time. When he gave thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, he took the cup. That's right. That's why we have a cup as well. And after they had eaten, he said, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant. Yes, we are in the new covenant. You know, I love Jesus. When he came, he just came and got away with the old. He said, you have heard it said, but I say. You have heard it said, hate those who hate you. You know, curse those who curse you. But I say, love your enemies. Do good to those that hurt you. Pray for those who persecute you. Bless those who curse you. My God. And that's why we do what we do. This is a time where if there's anyone you've gone throughout the week, I know you've bumped with people, you know, at work, on the road, wherever, and some people may have annoyed you, or you may have annoyed some people. But this is a time where we can reflect and say, God, I choose to forgive. I choose to let go. I don't hold any grudge. I don't want to take a curse. I want to take a blessing. This is a cup. The Bible says a cup of blessing. A cup of blessing. The bread of blessing. And so right now we want to receive blessing of healing. Blessing of abundance in the Lord, right? This is your portion. You are a child of the King, of the great God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Eh, Jehovah El Melet, he's the great, the, the, the King of kings. Father, we pray this morning as we just take on this emblem, as we do this in remembrance. Your word says the, the disciples devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread. We have devoted ourselves to coming together. You said, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves. And that's what we have done in obedience. We've come together and now we do what you commanded us to do. Not just as a ritual or tradition, but in obedience. You said, Lord, as we remember your sacrifice, may we also learn to forgive others, even as you have forgiven us much. And as you were on that cross by your stripes, we received healing. This morning we are claiming that healing as we take this. Lord, as we take this symbol of your broken body, your precious blood, all of that you were broken, bruised for our iniquities. The punishment that was upon you brought us peace. By your stripes we were healed. It was already done. So every time we are attacked by sickness, we will fight right back. And this morning, we believe you for wholeness. Shalom in our bodies, in our homes, for blessings. This is the cup, the bread of blessing. We receive it this morning. Thank you, Lord. For the joy of the Lord in this house this morning. For your peace in our minds that surpasses all understanding. Thank you, Jesus. Receive all the glory, O oh, our great God. In Jesus' mighty name and the people of God said, Amen and Amen. You may eat. You may eat, those of you online, whatever you had, eat and drink.
Hallelujah. So I'd like to welcome every one of you again officially to New Life Fellowship Global Ministries where Jesus Christ of Nazareth is Lord and Master. He's the only Lord. I love it, Daddy. He's our only Lord, our only Savior. And uh, for anyone who may be with us for the first time, thank you for connecting. We love you with the love of the Lord. You are welcome with the love of the Lord in the name of the Lord. And uh, for everyone who's in here for, after, who's not been here for a while, we're so glad to see you. God bless you, our wonderful sister back there. But thank you all for being here this morning. Uh, again, if anyone wants to know about us, we are on nlfglobal.org. We are on the World Wide Web, so you can access us from anywhere in the world. How wonderful. These are the blessings of technology. Technology has some bad things, but it does have some good. And we are to take advantage of the good. Praise the Lord. So connect with us, and we'd love to see you in person as well. So on the website, we even have a link for you to, it says plan your visit. And you can click on there, fill out some information about yourself, and let us know that you're coming just so that we can cater, prepare for you. That's all it is. And everything else you find on our website is free of charge. We don't really have anything other than maybe the book, our pastor's books that may be there for very cheap. But if you really need a book and you can't pay for it, hey, call us. Let us know. You know, let us know. I'm sure we'll be willing to let you have one of that. Uh, but otherwise, everything else, all the resources on our website, they are free. We have a, a whole section uh, entitled The Pastor's Heart. We love those. And we'd like for you to take advantage. They are like devotionals you can enjoy. So speaking of Pastor's Heart, in fact, I have one. We have one every single month. Every single month we have a write-up from our pastor. He takes his time. And uh, every single one of them, one of these are so loaded, so pregnant with so much wonderful good news. And so this morning I will read to you what we have for the month of October. Are you ready? It is entitled, The Seven I Am's in the John's Gospel. So these are the seven I Am pronouncements in John's Gospel. Are you ready to hear them? The term I Am relating to God appears over 300 times. Wow, in the Bible. First in the book of Genesis and last in Revelation. When God sent Moses to tell Pharaoh to release the enslaved Israelites in Egypt, he said, I am the Lord. I appear to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty. By my name, I was not known to them. His real name in Hebrew, Yahweh, or I am, was first revealed to Moses. Earlier in Exodus 3.14, God heard and answered the cry of his people using the expression, I am who I am. You may be familiar with this. We will explore Jesus' seven I am pronouncements in John's gospel, what he said, the context in which he made the statements, and an explanation of the meaning or significance to the Christ follower, that is you and I. Are you ready? So we will see, see God spoke about it in the past and now Jesus is also going to declare I am. So what I'll just tell you right there, Jesus is God. <laughs> you see that? He was in the old and now he's being reflected in the new. The same man, he's the same God. But let's see the seven and how it is significant to you and I. One, two, three, go. Number one, Jesus, the bread of life. <laughs> Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And we know this is spiritual, right? This verse is the first of seven I am pronouncements or announcements in John's gospel. This pronouncement was made to the crowd shortly after Jesus miraculously fed the 5,000 with only two small fish and five barley loaves. Jesus vividly reveals his character and nature to his listeners. By feeding the massive crowd, Jesus is teaching us that as believers, we should not only depend on the physical food, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Because the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Yes, I love it. Bible believing in church. So Jesus, the bread of life, number one. Number two, Jesus, the light of the world. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall never walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This statement was made when Jesus was presented with a woman caught in the act of adultery. Are you listening? At the temple, the Pharisees said to Jesus that this woman was caught in the very act of adultery. I wonder where the man was. <laughs> Their aim was to trap Jesus into saying something they could use against him. 
In this incident, Jesus declared himself as the light of the world who had come to a dark and sin-cursed world to offer the solution to everyone who was lost in the darkness of sin. And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. This quickening was based on Christ's light. Beyond the new birth, every believer needs Christ's light. They need Christ's light to come to continue to shine daily in the life of a believer. For thy word is a lamp, it shines unto my feet, and a light unto my path. We desperately need this infusing light because we are prone to darkness with our proclivity towards sin. Believers have the light of Christ so that we can let our light shine before a darkened world. The Bible says, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Wow. I am the light of the world. I am the bread of light. Number three, Jesus, the door of the sheep. This is what he said. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Jesus, in this third declaration, likens his followers to a sheep. You and I are sheep. A common theme for God's children in the Old as well as in the New Testament. Sheep are notorious for being directionless, uh -huh. weak, prone to wandering, timid, stubborn, oh, that sounds like us, easily frightened and utterly defenseless against predators. Without a shepherd, they are in deep trouble. Thankfully for believers, Jesus is the good shepherd. Somebody say amen. amen. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. And when he puts forth his own sheep, he goes before them and his sheep follow him for they know his voice. Let us strive to put aside the distraction and deceptions of this world and follow Jesus to green pastures. Number four, that led us to the fourth one. Jesus, the good shepherd. He said this, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. This verse contains the fourth I am statement of Jesus in John's gospel. The Middle Eastern shepherds, here's, here's, listen to this. The Middle Eastern shepherds often slept at the entrance of the sheepfold and literally became the door by which predators were barred from entering the sheep pen. Are you hearing this? So those shepherds in the Middle East would sit at the door so that they were the barrier before you could get to the sheep if you were a predator. In this narrative, when Jesus is referring to his sheep, he is not only talking about his initial mission to the lost house of Israel, but to individuals beyond the fold. Praise God that Christ's mission was global, as prophesied by his Isaiah. Paul also proclaimed in the New Testament that whosoever believeth in him should not be ashamed, for there is now no difference between a Jew and a Greek. For whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved yes you're paying attention love it number five we're getting there jesus the resurrection and the life this is what he said i am the resurrection and the life he that believes in me though he were dead yet shall he live this declaration took place at the death of lazarus remember that martha remember lazarus sister she met jesus and said if you had been here my brother would not have died Jesus then made this powerful declaration in today's text that he is the resurrection and the life. Even if you are dead, you will still come to life. Wow, what a promise. Christians do not need to fear death when they put their faith in Christ. Paul wrote that even though we are dead in our trespasses or our sins, God made us alive together with Christ and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So right now you are seated in heavenly places. The devil is under your feet. Somebody say amen. amen. Number six, Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said unto him, I am. Are you hearing these I am? I am the way, the truth, and the life. His, prof his profound declaration of his identity addressed the anxiety, confusion, and uncertainty about Jesus' departure. This proclamation also brings comfort to us Christ followers in the midst of a turbulent and unpredictable world. While there are many paths leading to deception and destruction, Christ is the only way to truth and life. In Matthew 7, 13 to 14, he says, Jesus said, wide, wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. 
but narrow. <laughs> Sister Becky, remember you led this morning, you said no matter how it is, I will still follow him because I know the end. Narrow is the way, narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way that leads to eternal life. But I will stay there because God is with me. Amen, somebody. The last one, but not the least, obviously. Jesus is what? The true vine. I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. This is the seventh and last I am statement made by Jesus in John's gospel. Immediately prior to his earthly departure. Although he was physically living, Christ admonished his disciples to continue abiding in him as the true source of light. While hard work and diligence are important in life, if the believer is not connected to the true vine, Jesus Christ, all his labor is for nothing. Did you hear that? If you labor and labor, but you are not connected to the vine, to Jesus Christ, it is for nothing. So please be connected. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, yes. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abides in the vine. You hear that? No more can you, except you abide in me. This is what Jesus was telling his disciples right before he left physically by abiding in him the father the gardener prunes purges and removes the unproductive plant growth in our lives the overarching goal being to bear much fruit in this regard hebrews 12 11 says no discipline seems pleasant at the time is that true no discipline seems pleasant but it may be painful however it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Can we give the Lord a wave for me? Say, Father, thank you that I am being trained. Even though I go through some turbulence and some trials, I know I am being trained by it. Thank you, Lord, for being the true vine. I will remain attached. I will abide in you. Can somebody say amen? amen. Here's a prayer for you to close this out. A prayer is on the screen. Can we say it together? One, two, three, go. Holy Father, I thank you for sending Jesus to be my bread of life, to be my light in the world, to be the door of the sheep, to be the good shepherd, to be the resurrection and the life, to be the way, the truth, and the life, and to be the true vine. Amen. And let's give the Lord a clap offering. Wow. Thank you. That was a write-up from our servant leader, Dr. William Ikane. What a write-up. God bless you, sir, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I tell you what, as a church, we love to support our missionaries, and every time we get the chance, we talk about them. Uh, this month, we highlight Kurt and Stephanie Plagenhof. They are serving in Albania, and I know we hear from them often, and we thank God for that. Uh, but this is to let you know that as you pray for our missionaries, as you support them financially, they are out there doing the work, all right? They're not just wasting your money. They're out there really, really doing work. And they send us these reports to remind us, you know, that we should pray for them. In fact, here's what Kurt and Stephanie, they have a few prayer topics. They said, we are in an intense season with back-to-back -back team meetings and travels. Please stand with us in prayer for some important issues. Here's what we'll do. We'll do 15-second prayers. I'll just go real quick. Number one, we urgently need a building permit to work on the wall of the new property in Dores, wherever that is. Pray for favor in the government offices that we will receive it expeditiously. Again, and let's use these missionaries as a point of contact to all our missionaries. I know they have needs, so let's pray. Again, 10 seconds. Let's pray that God will give them the building permit to get their new property. Let's go. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are the provider. Jehovah Jireh, provide, Lord, for favor with the government that these missionaries will get that building permit and get the building that they need to do your work. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Pray for our annual pastor's retreat. Pray for anointing, refreshing, health, and for revival fires to burn in our hearts and in the hearts of the nation of Albania. Let us pray. Father, we pray for the annual retreat. We pray for your revival, for your fire to burn, and that something will churn up in the nation of Albania for Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, say amen. It says, we will be traveling to South America for the World Mission Congress. Pray for safety, health, and God's anointing as world leaders meet together to seek the favor of God. So here's again, protection as they travel, for, 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 for anointing as they meet with other world leaders. Let's pray, protection and anointing. Father, we pray for protection as your missionaries travel. We pray as they meet other people that your anointing will flow as they gather, as they meet up, as they strategize 
to win souls. Lord, give them direction in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, this is more personal. Pray for our daughter and her team. They have an unprecedented opportunity to take a trip to Syria this November. That's next month. They have applied for visas. Please pray for God's favor, for leading, and for open doors. Pray for their protection because they are traveling into a war-torn area. So these are people who are his daughter uh, is going into a war-torn area in Syria. As you know, if you watch the news, Syria, there are bombs landing left and right. But they are going there to reach out to the lost. This is what we mean by people going out of their comfort zones. And your role is just to pray for them. Let us pray. Father, we pray for protection for Kurt and Plagenhoff's daughter and the team as they go out to Syria. Lord, we cover them under your precious blood. Father, we build a hedge of protection. We hide them under the shadow of your wings. They are protected. And you will use them to be effective winners. So winners in Syria, in Jesus' name. And here's the last one. Pray for Stephanie's mother. This is Kurt and Stephanie. This is Stephanie's mother. And uh, they are selling their homes. They are moving to California and Texas. Pray for supernatural grace and peace through a stressful time. Uh, and uh, just again for help, God to help them through the moving process. Father, we pray that you will help these families. These are their parents as they move from one state to another. God, we pray for protection as they move. And just again, blessing upon that family. We thank you. We thank you for our missionaries, Lord. And we use them as a point of contact to all other 17 or so missionaries we support in this ministry. Father, we thank you for giving us the grace to support them. Not only prayerfully, but financially. Thank you for every hand that gives. Father, bless Bless all those who are giving to support this ministry, to support our missionaries. Lord, we thank you that they will lack nothing. They are protected, they are provided for, and your anointing is upon their lives. They have beautiful feet to spread the good news of Jesus. Thank you that they will be effective winners, soul winners for the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, and the people of God said, amen and amen. So there you go. Uh, if you want to know how to give to support us as we support our missionaries and every other outreach program and our daily expenses as a church, as you know it, uh, you can give in so many ways. You can give online. That's our website, nlfglobal.org. give You can do it for those who are comfortable with Cash App. You can use Cash App. Uh, if you're comfortable with Zelle, you can use Zelle. Uh, again, all that information is on the screen for you, but you can find that on our website. So thank you again. And for those in the house during our offering time, really we don't have any offering special time. What we do is we have a basket in the back. For those of you who have a cash offering, you can just place it in the red uh, bucket back there on your way out. And we thank you. Father, we thank you again that you are the one who gave us everything we have in the first place. We just give back as a token of gratitude. Thank you, Lord, that you've blessed every one of us in here so much. I mean, the fact that we have cars to drive, <laughs> we, come, we have beautiful clothes, we have breakfast, we are richer than about 50% of the world. That's the truth. And so, Father, help us to understand this. Many times we complain about, oh, I don't like, I like this, I like that. But the truth is you have truly blessed us. We have a roof over our heads, we have clothes, we have food. What more do we need? Everything else is a bonus. So thank you, Lord, that as you've given us, help us to be generous enough, not only to give back to your work, but to give back to others we meet on the streets, people who help ask us for help. Let us be givers. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Open our eyes to understand this truth, so God. Thank you that even as we give, you've promised that you keep giving. <laughs> you keep, we are like a conduit. As we give out, you pour some more so we can keep giving. You keep pouring. Thank you because you said it shall be more. It will be pressed down, shaken together, shall men give unto us so that we can give to others. Thank you, Lord, that open hands are ready to receive more. Help us to have open hands, to be generous. Thank you for this work for our missionaries. Thank you for the work of New Life Fellowship, our building fund, whatever it is. Lord, I pray that you give us the grace to continue to sow in this vineyard as we look forward to the future, as we look forward to you doing great and mighty things, even in our midst. In Jesus' name, and people of God said again, amen and amen. No major announcements this morning. Uh, I know it's... We'll probably celebrate birthdays maybe next week or so, or maybe some other time. Oh, it is. Oh, there you go. I'm glad I picked it up. So today we want to highlight those of you who had birthdays in September. So do we have a wave of hands here? Just those who had September birthdays. All right. I see Obama over there. I see Blair. It's okay. We got some September birthdays. In this. Come on out. Come on out. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's, get, let's give the Lord a clap. We thank God for life. You know, it's easy to celebrate death, but we don't want to celebrate death. We want to celebrate life. When people die, there's a whole big celebration when they're dead and gone. When they're alive, let's celebrate them. So, sister, I'd like to call up our 
Oh, it's going to be, oh, never mind. It's going to be after church. But we can just say a prayer right now. Is that all right? Let's stretch forth our hands to this young man. This is Brother Bless and Brother Obama Anjay. Let's pray that God will give them long life. These are young men. We thank God that they're being groomed. They're growing in the fear of the Lord, in the church. I love it. And may they continue. You know, let me just share something. Statistics show that about 75% of young people, literally about 75 to 80, this is the Barna Research Group in the United States, once they leave church, so by the time they get to about 18 and they leave their parents' house, go to college, you know what happens? The research shows that they leave church. They don't show up in church again. That's it. They're like, oh, daddy is no longer pushing me to church every Sunday. I'm gone. Can we declare that this will not be the case for these ones in Jesus' name? Let's pray that they will continue the rest of their lives. They will serve the Lord. They will stand out among the crowd. They will be leaders, not followers. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for bless. We thank you for Obama. Father, we thank you that these kids are growing up in the fear of God. Father, we pray that they will stand out. Oh, they will be the pillars in their generation. Father, even when they grow and leave their parents' house, they will not leave your house. Thank you, Jesus, that they will continue in the faith. They will abide in you all the days of their life, even as you give them long life. Lord, they will be leaders in their generation. They will not follow the crowd. The crowd will follow them as they follow you. They are blessed. They are highly favored. They will excel. They are the head and not the tail. They are the best at what they do. Everywhere they go, they will shine. Your light will shine through them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Hallelujah. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Bless Obama. Happy birthday to you all. So at the end of service, at the end of service, our minister of hospitality, Minister Hannah, she has a token for them. We have some cake at the back and some drinks and something we can just celebrate with these two. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We've come to a time where we're about to get into our time of dancing and jumping. Are you getting ready? But before we do that, I'd like to call on our first lady. Our first wonderful lady, Minister Grace Ekane. She'll come up here with a brief word to just exhort us, lift us up, and then we can stand up physically and praise our God. Amen. Oh, that is too weak. Maybe my amen is weak too. Amen. God is good. And all the time. You know why he's good? You are breathing. There are some people in ICU struggling for their last breath. Even if you have nothing else to be grateful to the Lord, thank God you are breathing. Amen. Amen. We, are, we, we just saw the names of Jesus, the I am. So I just want to sing, I am the Lord. That is my name. I will never share my glory with anyone. You are the Lord, that is your name. You will never share your glory with any man. You will never share your glory with anybody. Almighty God, that is your name. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will never share my glory with any man. I will never share my glory with anybody. Almighty God, that is my name, my name. God, that is my name. I will never share my glory with any man. I will never share my glory with anybody. Almighty God, that is my name. Alpha Omega, that is your name. You will never share your glory with anybody. Man, you will never share your glory with anybody. Almighty God, that is your name. God the Lord, that is your name. You will never share your glory with any man. You will never share your glory with anybody. Mighty God, that is your name. No matter how God uses you. He is the one who is using you. He will not share his glory with you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. This morning, we want to read from the book of Ephesians. The pastor has been teaching us about maturity in the Lord. I think we have the greatest teaching in this church. 
not prosperity, not anything but maturity. Because that is where God wants us to be. So that we become more and more like Jesus. And then when he appears, we'll be like him. Amen. Amen. So let's see. Ephesians 4, 1 to 16. It is written. The title here says, Unity and Maturity in the Body of Christ. As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. What does he ascend mean, except that he also descended to the lower earthly region? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all heavens, in order to fill the whole universe. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for the work of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, and become mature, attending to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be in infants, tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there, there by the wind of teachings, and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking truth in love, we will grow to become, in every respect, the mature body of him who is head. That is Christ. That's maturity. That's what God is looking for. From him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work, as each member of New Life Fellowship does their work. Praise the Lord. Amen. worship the King of Kings in this place this morning. If you will please join me on your feet, use your voices and your hands and everything that is within you that God has given you to give him praise this morning. Amen. Amen. I can hear you. Amen.
matter what I'm going through right now, I like to remind myself of my future. My future is bright because my future is in Christ. So whatever happens to me now, I know that if I'm hid with God and with Christ in God, then nothing can touch me that he has not allowed. Amen? And know that even whatever you go through on this earth, even if you struggle and come back and struggle and come back, remind yourself that you have a kingdom where you're going. And where, where there's no sorrow, there is no hurt, there is nothing that will cause you any kind of pain. But we will worship our Savior in eternity forever. Amen?
is that we need you. The times are perilous. The times are challenging. Father, people take white and turn them into black. Take good things and make them evil. These are truly the last days. And as the praise team led us, we are coming as a people with tears in our eyes, with broken hearts, that you will mend us. That you let us shine in the darkness of this world. We'll be the true light because your light is in us. Oh God, help us, oh God. Help us, oh God. You see our hearts. Bless those who are watching that they will receive the same unction that we are receiving in this holy place. Thank you for the brethren. Thank you for your church, the ecclesia. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for delivering us. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for bringing us into your own family, the very special family, the family of God. And not only us, you want the whole world every single solitary person to come into your family. Thank you as you lead us in this series. In Jesus' name. Bless our children as they go to their class with their pastors that they will have the same unction, the same anointing upon them and upon our kids. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. We thank our guests who have come to worship with us. We are grateful to have you here. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are dealing with a series, The Culture of God's Family. This morning, I bring to you good news about four things that will excite you. But you get those four things on condition. And the condition is, you simply obey. Many of you, like me, have heard expression among Christians. How are you doing? They would say, I am blessed and highly favored. Wow. And I happened to run into a passage from scripture this week. That made sense to me. Because if you meet a brother and say, how are you doing? I am blessed and highly favored. Good expression. But that is wishful thinking. So today we'll clear the record. Based on God's word. Which says you are truly blessed. And you are truly favored by God. If you do only two things. You want to know those two things? The two things the Bible says we should do. In order to proclaim that I am blessed. And I'm always highly favored by God. Is to honor God and serve people. Do what? Honor God and serve people. Do what? Honor God and serve people. Turn to somebody around you and tell them. You want to declare that you are blessed and highly favored? Just do these two things. Honor God and serve others. Is that hard? No. Hallelujah. It's not hard. I honor God every day by the things I do. I honor God every day by the things I say. I honor God every day by worshiping him. I honor God every day by obeying him. And I know that I cannot obey him in my own power. So he has said, don't worry. I'm the God who's working where? In me. Say, God is working in me. Giving me his desires to do what now? To obey him. <laughs> you got it. Giving you the desires to... You see, because our own desires are very selfish. All of us. So he gives me his desires so I may obey him. And then because our strength is so limited, he gives me the power to please him. 
So every day from now on, you see, in the past when you heard somebody say, how are you doing? Oh, I'm blessed and highly. And you thought that was good. But if you continue with the conversation, they will start telling you complaints and things that are happening in their life. You kind of ask yourself, is this a man who is blessed and highly favored? They contradict exactly what they just said by the way they live. So we know the trick. We know the secret. We know the game. The game of God from his word. If I want to be blessed, if I want to be highly favored, every day of my life, I do two things. What are two things, church? Honor, Honor God and serve people. Hallelujah. Could you write that down? If I want to be blessed and highly favored every day of my life, all I need to do is to honor God and to serve people. Hallelujah. Before we get to the four dynamic, exciting blessings I brought for you this morning, I'd like us to review what we've done in the past. Amen? We are teaching a series on the culture of God's family. What is God's family? God's family is composed of people who have made a personal decision to accept God's wonderful gift in the person of Lord Jesus Christ. That's all. You and I were born in a human family. In this human family, you and I had no choice. Amen? We just saw ourselves in this life. No, the kids that are born in Pastor Emmanuel or uh, uh, Minister uh, Edwin's family, they did not choose to be born in that family. Neither were you. You did not make that choice. You just saw yourself born in a family. But God says, I have good news for you. I have a better family. My family. And you don't have to do anything. What? No. You just have to accept my gift. Just with your will said, God, accept what Christ did on my behalf. And you belong to God's family. Please, let's not complicate this good news. The good news for everybody is come to Jesus and he will show you the way to the Father. He says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am life. No man can come to my Father except through because I came to die on this cross and took on my own body everything that is terrible in this world. Everything. Abortion, homosexuality, gossips, killings, stealings, you name them. I came purposefully to take all of that and put it on me, on the cross. And in turn, I give you eternal life. In turn, I give you freedom. In turn, I give you joy. In turn, I want to make you blessed and highly favored. Hey, my God. You are not blessed and highly favored from your human family. But in God's family, you are blessed and highly favored by God. This is the good news that we have. Praise the name of Jesus. We have looked, as we review quickly, because we all forget the series. It started with, how do I deal with God's culture? As we said, God's culture is different from human culture. Um, we said that God created me and you and every person on planet Earth with one object, to love you. Nothing surpasses God's desire, God's intent to love you. Nothing. Brethren, if you forget every other message which you, you have heard and you hear, get this message that God loves me. He created you and me in his image to love us. Parents, even human parents, when they give birth to children, they want nothing from the child. Amen? You can see our minister of, of, um, of praise and uh, our brother, um, Minister Edwin, they have their babies where? Can you watch? Where do they have their babies where? Oh, in their heart. Right there. 
That's where the heart is. Praise the name of Jesus. What are they asking from those children? I wish it today was Wednesday I was giving them the mic. But I guess they would say, we want nothing. We just want to love them. We just want to love them. So that when they grow up, then they will love them back. I was talking to a, a couple the other day and um, the man, the, the couple said that the daughter is very excited. The granddaughter was very excited about the grandmom because when the granddaughter was growing up, he grew up with the grandmom. And even though the grandmama is so frail, she's getting married. Instead of going, getting married in the Caribbean, you know what she decided? I'll get married in Atlanta where my grandma is so that she can be at my wedding. I want to show her a bit of the love that she showed me when I was growing up. Same way. God loves you so much that the intensity of God's love will make me and you to love him back. Praise the Lord. So, the first thing we said was, you are God's primary object of love. His love. And we know that that love is not a fickle love. That love is unconditional. That love is sacrificial. And that love is eternal. Wow. Brethren, may God open my eyes. May God open my heart to truly understand the length of God's love. Which never ends. And it has a name. God has attached his name to that name. Jehovah Olam. The everlasting God. Amen. My love is so long that in this life and in the life to come I will always love you. Always. God never changes position. No matter what you do his love is consistent. Some people may take advantage of that. And say, because God's love is consistent, I cannot do my thing. Then you don't understand what God's love is. In fact, in the church, we pastors should not preach about sin. If people understood, listen to me, if what? People understood the, gift, the love of God. Amen? You will not force people to come and pray. They are motivated by God's love to come and? To come and? They are motivated by God's love not to sin or gossip or do these things. That we hammer on the pulpit. Don't do this and don't do this. It is because we have not understood the magnitude of God's love. Once I understand God's love, I will run towards God. I will want to please God. I will do everything to make God happy. Because I understand. Amen? The two children who are living, if they started walking and mama and daddy said, come, what will they do? They will come. If they get hurt, what do they do? They come back to the one who loves them. That is the magnitude. That is a revelation I'm praying to God for me and for all of us. That will understand the length of God's love. We'll understand the width of God's love. What is God's love? What's the width? God's love is everywhere present at the same time. And he gave himself a name of that. The Hebrew name is Jehovah Shammah. God who is present everywhere at the same time. Present. Go up to the moon. Thank you, Pastor. Go to the ocean. Go to the depth of, the, of life. Go anywhere you find him. Then he says, hey, when you commit sin, I'm Jehovah Salah in the Hebrew. Which means, I'm the God who has promised that anytime you run to me because you've sinned, I will forgive you. I will cleanse you. All of your past, your past will be taken care of. You will not have to bother because you've come to me with a sincere heart. I will erase it. The God who forgives. And anytime you think that you've fallen so low, you've fallen so low that you are desperate, that you think you're hopeless, everything is gone, God says, hey, I'm Jehovah El Elyon, whose hands are so long that they will undergirth you. So you don't have to fall into the pit of depression. So many people today are falling in the pit of depression. So many people today are they are destitute. They are hopeless. They don't know they, are, they don't know where life is taking them. But my God says, my 
everlasting hands are where? Underneath to hold you. Please allow me to share this again with you guys. You know the king of the birds. What's his name? The eagle. The eagle, when he wants his children to start flying, he goes and throws them out of the nest. Hallelujah. And the children start fretting. <laughs> Before the children know, the long arms of the eagle, mama eagle goes underneath them and scoops them. Scoops them and brings them back to the nest. Say, so when you are depressed, when I'm depressed, the everlasting arms of God undergirth me. When Satan wants to put me down, when people want to put me down, God's everlasting hands are there to undergirth me. That four-dimensional love of God is represented by the cross. How high? How deep? How wide? How long? Amen? The four cardinal points of the world North, south, east, and that's how big God's love is for you and for me. My prayer, God, is to take away this mentality of sin, 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 sin. Because that's where I came back from. from, from. That was my background. Every Sunday I went to church, I had sin, I had sin, and sin, and sin, and sin. And if you looked at most of us, we left the church depressed. We didn't live for the better. But when you tell people the good news of what God has for them, they change. You always run towards things that are good. Do you? Do you? Yes. When they slide, what do you do? You run towards that light. When the something has failed, you run towards it. It's because we have not gotten the understanding, the revelation of God's love for you and for me. He loves you perfectly. We don't even know what perfection means. But that's God's love for you. And it will make us do things we go out of our way. Amen? We go out of our way. Say, so I've understood this God who loves me. And I'll do everything for him. So, your main object, the main object that God created you and made into his own image is to love you. May God help me. And may God help us to understand that. Number two. God wants us to know that he's made you to belong to his family. Will you say amen? amen? Number three, God wants you to become not like any other person, not like a denomination or whoever, whoever the star is. God wants you to become only like his son, amen. Jesus Christ. That is the ultimate purpose why God created you. To love you, for you to belong to his family, and to become like his son. He doesn't want you to look like any other person. These comparisons. Oh, this big man here and that big man. Forget it. He wants you to become like his perfect son. Today, I bring you good news. As we examine the fourth thing in the series. God called you to serve him and others. From today, say I'm bivocational. Bi Amen. You are bivocational. Bi means two. It means God wants me to serve him and serve others. Oh my God. I'm so excited. I don't know how, how to jump and, and scream and dance. I don't know. That God has opened my eyes to understand that I am called to be bivocational. To serve him and to serve others. Hallelujah. So, we'll begin by reading what is not on the screen. It says in 1 Peter 2, 4, Come to Christ, who is the living foundation of rock, the cornerstone upon which God builds. God builds only on the sure foundation. On Wednesday, we said that you cannot have stability in anything in this life. Can we prove it? Do you know people have been friends today and then tomorrow they're enemies? There's no stability. Do you know people had jobs and lost those jobs? Do you know people who have been very healthy today, tomorrow they're sick in the hospital? 
Do you know Paul went to the arm? Went, oh, thank God for my son. Thank God. But I, when I watch television and I see those who come with half limbs, no eyes, nothing, they went to fight for this country. Before they left their families, they were healthy. They were whole. Some have come in a bag. What do you call those bags? Body bags. What do you call them again? Body bags. Body bags. Dead. Your husband goes with children and then they bring a bag. A dead a corpse back to you. I like the song that there's a man called Nikon Baraga. Who do you know about him? He says there's no condition is permanent in this world. But I can tell you one condition that is permanent is having God in your life. He brings the stabilizing force. Only God can fill that place to give you stability in this life. He will not only give you stability, he will give you security, he will give you blessings, he will give you favor, you name it. Everything is in God. So we cannot afford, we cannot afford, brethren, not to have God in our lives. So today we want to give you an opportunity. Can we do that, church? For those who are not in, we want to show you how. Amen? Those who are not where? In where? The family. God's family. We want to beg you. We want to go on our knees. Come to Jesus. Don't come to a denomination. Don't come to New Life Fellowship. Forget those nonsense. Come to Jesus. And so we want to pray with you now. If you want to have God in your life, if you want to have the one stabilizing force in your life, God in the person of Lord Jesus Christ in your life, if you have heard and you have understood, please pray this prayer with me so that you too become a member of the amazing family of God. Amen? Amen. Say this prayer with me aloud with joy. Holy Father, Holy Father I come to you just as I am. Please, Lord, Forgive my sins. Come and take residence. Come and take precedence. Come and control my life. Come and be at the center of my life. From this day forth. I've prayed. And I've been told. That you took away all of my curses. All of my sins. All of my trespasses. Every sin that I've ever committed. I'm committing or whoever commit. You took them and bore them on your body on the cross. And now, I receive you. I receive your love. I receive everything about you. Take my life and make it thine. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that prayer from your heart, you said because God sees the heart, not the external if you said that prayer from your heart, according to the authority that has been given to us in the word of God, you are a member of God's family. Yeah. And you know what? Heaven is rejoicing because you made that decision. If we hear a little bit look, look, that's okay, but heaven is rejoicing. Can we rejoice with heaven? Can we rejoice with heaven? Yeah. Hallelujah. So today we want to consider our bivocational calling. Serving God and serving others. Galatians 1.15 from the GNT. Again, I always like us to read. The word of God is so sweet. That's why I invite you to read the word with me. Hallelujah. And sometimes it keeps some of us awake. And it helps our mind from drifting. Thank you. Because as pastor read to us in that write-up, we are we have a proclivity. Proclivity means we have a tendency to go astray. So help me, are you? Wow, those of you out there, I wish you were here to help me together. Hallelujah. Galatians 1.15. Girl, God in his grace chose me even before I was born and called me to do what? To serve him. He called me to do what? To serve him. Oh my God. From the very beginning, God chose you and me to serve him. Nothing more, nothing less. He knew you. 
And we'll see later on your shape, which we've introduced many times in this church. He's given you a unique shape that has allowed only you to make a contribution to this world that no other person can in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says in Titus 2.14, again, it's not on your screen, Titus 2.14, God has purified for himself a people that are his very own. Are you God's very own? Yes, I am God's very own. Say I'm God's very own. And these people are eager to do what is good. You are created in God's image to be bivocational. And we said you are created to serve him and to do good to others. Oh my God. Let's have another passage which is on your screen. Ephesians 2.10 called to serve God and man. Ephesians 2.10. Let's read together. Go. We are God's workmanship. For what? Created in Christ Jesus to do good work. Oh my God. Titus tells us, you have created to do good works. You are eager to do good works. The book in Ephesians says, your purpose in this life was to do good works. So if I do bad works, that's not my, my portion. Amen? My portion is to do good works. Which God did what? Prepared. Where? In advance for us to do. My God. See, before you came into the scene, before you came into your mother's womb, God had planned it all. That you are destined to do good works. And that decision comes all the way because I know God loves me. The foundation of it. Uh, we have the end of this message. We have two more messages. And the last one will show you an umbrella and how all of this fits into that umbrella of love. If you understand, if I understand what love is, I'm telling you, you will preach nothing else. Let people get a revelation. They will jump at it. If you see good food, you go towards that good food. Amen? Now, here are the four amazing blessings that we get. The first one, can we read it together? It creates massive amounts of joy in your life. <laughs> when I serve God by loving him, by obeying him, by keeping his, his word, by, by, by worshipping him, and most of you, please, Adopt the habit of worshiping God in your bathroom when you're bathing. Amen? Don't just put the water. Just thank God for the water. Because there are many places where we don't have showers. Hallelujah. I went somewhere. I won't tell you the name of the place. You have to put water in a bucket and do this. Right? And maybe the water is not enough. Because they ration the water. So you don't get much water. You don't even get a full bucket. Praise the Lord. But here you are. Ha! When you serve others... You get, and God, God and others, you get massive amounts of joy in your life. Can we prove that? Can we prove that? Where can we get that from? The Bible. Thank you, Mama. We have two verses to always support our thesis. So we don't make noise. We have two, always two. Because in the mouth of two or three witnesses, what? The truth is established. Can you help me now read Philippians 2, 17 from God's Word translation? Go. My life is being poured out as a part of the sacrifice and service I offer to God for your faith. Yet, I am filled with joy and I share that joy with all of you. <laughs> when I serve my God, I'm serving you. Many people don't understand this. That when they serve others, they're serving. Let's read Philippians 4, 4 to 5 from the TLB. You have massive amounts of joy when you serve God and others. Let's read it with joy. Go. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again. 
Rejoice. Let everyone see that you are unselfish and considerate in all you Ha! Ah, what makes people not to understand that I'm full of joy? It's when I serve self, myself, and me. The way out of it is when I serve others, I become unselfish. And I become considerate of others. So serving is others focused, not me focused. God focused, others focused. Isn't that simple enough? Praise the name of Jesus. So the first thing is that I'm filled with massive, massive amounts of joy as I serve God and others. Is that clear? Yes. Who wants to have massive joy? Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh my God, yes. Amen. We have no need today. Serve God, serve others. Number two, Amen. When I use my life to serve and bless others, when I'm a blessing to others, it improves my relationships. Hallelujah! Not only does it give me massive joy, it improves my relationships. Many of you can attest to this in this church because you are a wonderful group of people and you help others. Every time you do something to somebody, watch them. Very joyful. <clears throat> we had, when we were back home, Two girls who were helping us raise up our kids. They were my wife's relatives. They were very opposite. When we used to give them allowance every month. Amen. Whenever I receive my salary, I'll give monies to my wife to give to each of them. One of them, when they received, I always wanted to watch. She would be so excited. Wow. Mommy, thank you. It brings so much massive joy to you. Amen? Amen? And improves what? Your relationship. These girls worked very hard. Um, we were blessed because I used to teach at the university and my wife used to work. And many people leave from the church after service. The young people, they will come. So every Sunday we prepared so much food. <laughs> and they will all come to Elder Ikane's house, hallelujah. And Mama Ikane to come and eat. You could see the faces of these ones. Some of them were university students. They just loved our home. So every Sunday there was a celebration. After service. Hallelujah. When you serve people, you receive that massive joy. And when you watch their faces, they're so happy. Those two girls, the other one, when you gave her a gift, she said, thank you. That's all. Straight face. Amen? But the other one would be so joyful. So when we gave the other girl who was so joyful, we all were very happy. The one, uh, thank you. We said, okay. At least we've seen the joy in this one's face. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Matthew 20, 28 says about attitudes. Let's read together. Go. Your attitude must be like my own for I did not come to be served but to serve. Jesus is saying, hey, I didn't come here to be served. I want to serve. Brethren, there is something about serving others. There's some, something happens to you. Again, I don't want to give too many examples about me, but on Wednesdays I'll listen to your own examples. I joined a meeting of people from my tribe when we were back home. And when it was time for food, everybody wanted food. But very poor did not want to serve others. Yours truly was serving. And every time we met, we met once a month. The president of the meeting said, as a can Meaning a can. That's how we say a can. Don't forget yourself because you serve every person else, but you know it. And I did that purposefully. Because I was a Christian, I wanted to show them Christian love. But this president or chairman will always remind me, don't forget to put your little share 
by the side. I did not listen. I made sure everybody had food. When they got to their Mayonde Mohona hall, I, that was not my part. My part was to serve them the food. But brethren, it gave me so much joy. And I saw smiles on people's faces. Do you want to put a smile on somebody's face? Yeah. Serve them. Jesus says, I came not to be served, but to Romans 14, 18, another verse. If you serve Christ in this way, with the attitude of Christ, you will please God and be respected by people. You want to draw respect from people? Be their servant. There's a little song which goes, if you want to be great in God's kingdom, Learn to be the servant of all. If you want to be great, oh, in God's kingdom, learn to be the servant of all. Learn to be the servant of all. Learn to be the servant of all. If you want to be great in God's kingdom, learn to be the servant of all. My wife did a phenomenal job with all of our kids because she got those songs from the internet and taught my children. And they all know this song, all of them. They may be quiet in the audience, but they know the songs because they sang those songs. They went along with, the program was Sing Along. And you have this one. In God's kingdom, learn to be the servant of all. Help me. We great in God's kingdom. Learn to be the servant of all. May we live after this message with one purpose in mind. I'm bivocational and I will serve people just as my Jesus did. If there's something to do, do it. Amen? I've never forgotten what our pastor said on this pulpit a while ago when he said, when he goes to the bathroom, because it's are open bathrooms, People scatter things and when I go and jog their bathrooms, some people leave them very messy. I remember the lesson he taught. I will take whatever it needs, sprinkle water and then clean up the place and go wash my hands. I've done that ever since. I leave a place better than I found it. A servant at heart. Nobody sees, but God sees you. Praise the name of Jesus. So we have seen how it, create, it creates massive joy in you. We see how it improves what? Our? Number three. And this is the biggie. Proverbs 11.25 says, the one who blesses others is what? Please, can you help me? Let's read together. Go. The one who blesses others is abundantly blessed. Those who help others are helped by who? By God. <laughs> See, brethren, this is so sweet. You want to be abundantly blessed? You have the formula given by God. If you bless others, God himself will abundantly bless you. Do we believe it? Okay. If we help others, we will be helped by him. Don't expect help from another person. Expect your help from 1 Peter 4.10 and we'll go through this 1 Peter 4.10 in depth on Wednesday. Talking about your ship. We'll review it. For others who didn't know it, we'll do it. 
Now, let's read 1 Peter 4, 10 about serving others. How does it begin? Go. God has given each of you some special abilities. Be sure to use them to help each other passing on to others God's many kinds of blessings. Oh my God. <sighs> Are you happy? I am. This brings us into what we have introduced before called SHIP. SHIP. SHIP stands for, the acronym for SHIP is S standing for spirit, right? H stands for your heart's passions or desires. A stands for your natural abilities. Amen? What's the next letter? P stands for your personality. And E stands for all of your life's experiences, whether they be in the family, in the school, at work, much more. But the good news is that your shape is unique. Did you get that? Yes. God made, has made us what we are. In Christ Jesus, God made us to do good works which God planned in advance for us to live our lives doing. There are no two people who are alike. God never made a carbon copy of you. Even twins who are born twins. Amen? Some, somebody has twins here. Hallelujah. Are they the same? They are so different because they are uniquely made. May I remind you what I said some time ago? That these snowflakes, snowflakes, right? No two snowflakes are the same. So, no two people are the same. You are unique in every single way. You have a unique voice. On Wednesday, we'll try it out. Amen? We'll tell some, everybody to say, God. You hear everybody pronounce it very different. Amen? You have different eye colors. No two people have the same eye color. No two people have the same thumbprint. No two. You are very unique. What a God. That has created us so uniquely. Raise your hand up and wave to the Lord and say, God, I'm very unique. There's no one like me. Hallelujah. That's why you don't imitate people. That's why you don't compare yourself with people. No. Because you're unique. And until people understand this, comparisons to be, oh, he doesn't preach like uh, his son. He doesn't sing like, don't do that. Because you are unique in your genre. Hallelujah. Why did God do that? Because God is unique in his genre. Praise the name of Jesus. God doesn't clone people. <laughs> no one in history has been like you. No one in history is like you. No one in history will ever be like you. From beginning to eternity, you are you. Tell somebody, I'm thankful. Please look at somebody and tell I'm thankful that God made me unique. And I'll never compare myself with some other person. Hallelujah. Um, I did a mistake sometime with two of my sons. I told one, I said, why are you not like? And the son was mad. Dad, you never compare me with. I'll leave out the names. Hallelujah. And you know, I learned my lesson. I get even more understanding by seeing that God created me alone. No other person will be like me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, 
you are blessed with special abilities. Now, on Wednesday, I will show you when you leave out the S, because there are two S's. You have the spirit man in you, and you have the big S when Christ comes into your life. And it functions differently. You don't have any spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts if you are not born again. Today that you receive Christ, the Holy Spirit has come and is dwelling in you. So you are now complete. You are not hap. You are shape. Do you get what I'm saying? Before you be had a shape, you were hap. H-A-P-E. Because the sinful spirit in you is dead. But once you become a member of God's family, you have all of the spiritual gifts, special gifts, that we'll look at on Wednesday. Will you say amen with me? So, when I serve God and I serve others, I have massive amounts of joy. It improves my relationships. In fact, I am a total blessing. I'm a total blessing. It brings, the third thing, it brings meaning to my life. See, you do not know your meaning in this life until you can use the gifts that God has given you. Did you hear that? Yes. Listen, you do not know your significance. You don't know your importance in this world until you start exercising those things that God has given you to God and to others. That's point number three. It brings meaning to my life. Can we read the two verses together? Go. Mark 8.35. Go. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake and for the sake of the good news, you will save it. Amen? I give up my life. Give my life away. Remember? Yes. So you can use me. So God cannot use you until you give your life. Does this make sense to all of us? Are we excited about this? Give your life away. For God's sake and for the good news of spreading the good news. 1 Corinthians 15, 58, NCV also admonishes us. Go. So, my dear brothers and sisters, stand how? Strong. Do not let anything move you. Now, listen to the clencher. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your work in the Lord is never wasted. The fifth lesson which we're going to get next Sunday talks about being a missionary. Hallelujah. Amen. What you do in serving others, you are being a minister. A minister means one who serves. We are all called to be ministers of God. But then there is another office. Some of us are called into one of the five offices. You are either called to the office of an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, or teacher. God has called to that special office. But know this, that every Christian is a minister. A minister means one who is called to serve. When God called us 24 years ago, the first brochure that I wrote was call to serve. Hallelujah. I understood my calling. It wasn't called to be a pastor. It was called to be a minister. One who serves. Praise the Lord. So it brings me great joy. Not only does it create massive amounts of joy in me, not only does it improve my relationships, number three, it brings meaning to my life. You have meaning in your life when you serve others. Praise the Lord. There's a friend of mine who has gone to be with the Lord. He was 80-something years old. 
He's left a widow who is weak. The widow has children, big children, who work. But that lady chose to tell me and my wife that every time her water is finished, guess who should bring water? Us. And we do so joy. Whenever she calls, Brother Willie, yes, ma'am. I'm out of water. And she only drinks spring water. So we have to go to the store, get the spring water, and bring it. Oh, I wish you could, I'm serious. I wish you could call me every week. It's truly a delight. When I come with, a, with the water and I, I come, sometimes I carry it my, and I, I develop what? My muscles, right? So they don't get weak. I carry them. Oh, welcome. Sometimes my wife has time to come with me and we both carry it to her. When we say, you know what happens on her face? You're not a prophet? Smile. <laughs> I are here with my water. Brethren, you know the significance in your life when you serve people. I wish this was Wednesday that you too will give your own testimony. I know many of you do the same service. But let God really hammer this that I'm bivocational. I serve God and I serve others. Will you say amen with me? <coughs> the last, the fourth one. Amen? And so, the last one. Hallelujah. You will leave a lasting legacy. Somebody told me in this church, said, Daddy, we need to have our own place. Why? Because our children and children's children will know their daddy and mommies left this place for them. Hallelujah. You, if you do things only for you, it's short-sighted. But when you do things to last beyond you, you've done great. If you want to be great in God's kingdom, learn to be the servant of all. If you want to be great in God's kingdom, learn to live a legacy. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, we live a lasting legacy when we serve God and serve others. Here I had to get more verses than you would like. Hallelujah. Let's read the verses together. Proverbs 10, 7. Go. Good people will be remembered as a blessing. Do you want when you pass through this life, you've gone up to heaven, that you are remembered as a blessing. Right. Is that what you really desire? Yes. Can we continue? Hebrews 6.10 NCV says, God is fair. He will not forget the work you did and the love you showed for him by helping his people. You are a minister helping his people. And he will remember you and remember that you are still helping them. Amen? What you've done, and you're still alive, you're still doing what? Helping them. Matthew 20, 26 says, if you want to be great, you must be a servant of all. That's where that song came from. Can we sing it one more time? If you want to be great, in God's kingdom, learn to be the servant of all. You want to be great in God's kingdom. Learn to be the servant of all. How do we apply this message? We have two verses, but I want to say this to you. No task that you do from a pure heart to others is menial. Amen? Amen. Again, let me give you another example. You, have, you two are like me. You do many of those things. But when we came back to this country, I didn't have a job readily. You know what I did? I went to the mall 
And I asked him, there was a job. See, yes, there's a job here. I was a professor with a, you know, you know what I was. I put that professoralship, how? Threw it away. I went and I was cleaning the mall. My daughter, one of them here, the friend said, ah, we saw your dad sweeping the mall. He said, yes. What was the idea? My family would not starve as long as I have strength. While waiting for that big job to be hired back in the university, I have my hands and I can sweep and I can mop. And what I'm doing, I, I sing, hallelujah. Maybe because I sing, people notice, ah, that guy is mopping. And, <laughs> you know, he's enjoying what he's doing. And I truly enjoyed it because he put bread on the table for my family. We are called to serve. Let's read. Now, so no menial task is meaningless when done with the right attitude. Can you write that down? No menial task is meaningless. In fact, it is meaningful when done with the right attitude or motive. No menial task becomes meaningless. Instead, it becomes meaningful when done with the right motive. Let's read the two verses as we close. Amen? John 12, 26 from the NCV says, please help me now read. Go. If you serve me, who is that me? God. By vocational, you serve God. You must go with me. My servants will be with me wherever I if you serve me, my father will honor How come I am blessed and highly favored when I honor God? Hallelujah! Number two, Colossians 3, 7. And this is now for others. Let's read it with joy. I beg, the last joy you have in you. Go. Whatever you say or do, should be done in the name of the Lord Jesus as you give thanks to God the Father because of him. Will you say amen? amen? Rise with me and let's say this prayer and then I'll give the stage over to our pastor to close us up. Stretch your hands to this prayer and pray it for yourself. I'll pray it for myself. Amen? Go. From 1 Kings 8.54. Go. May God keep... Oh, good, Pastor. Not now. Pray for yourself. Go put a name there. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's start now. Go. May God keep William centered and devoted to him, following the, his life path he has cleared, watching the signpost, walking at the pace and rhythm he has laid down. Pastor, come and take it away. Hallelujah. We thank God and may he continue to bless you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. We thank God for our servant leader and for the strength. You know, you would not guess that he's getting into his 80s, you know, preaching with all that strength and vigor, you know. He spent the first 30 or so minutes with so much power. I know how that feels because when I preach here as a young man, I almost run out of breath. But to look at him, you know, in, uh, in almost 100 years old, and he can do that. What a blessing. But we thank God for a wonderful word this morning. You know, if you want to be blessed and highly favored, we've got it. You've got to honor God and serve others. You are bivocational. And I love how he closed out by saying, you know, even with the smallest things, you know, it's all about the attitude with which you do them. Amen. When done with the right attitude, that thing that you do is meaningful, even though people may think it's meaningless. Well, I do things as unto the Lord. And it was very simple. There's a slide that summarizes the sermon. We see four things that we've learned this morning. And don't forget them. Can we have them on the screen? The, when you use your life to serve and bless others, we see four things right there. It creates massive amounts of joy in your life. I love it. It improves your relationships. It brings meaning to your life and you will leave a lasting legacy. 
What a blessing. I pray that that will be imprinted in our minds as we get out of here. We will not just be hearers, but doers of God's word. Uh, we're so glad for everyone who's connected with us, who's here. Thank you, sir. I can see you for the first time here, for the first time. At least it may be the first time, maybe not. But we're so glad to have you. I don't know. I guess we'll get you to just kind of tell us your name so we can get to hear and call you by name. If we can get you a mic, if that's possible. Uh, just so we can. There you go. There we go. There you go. Andrew, that's right. Anthony. Anthony. Amen. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, God bless you, sir. We are so glad, Mr. Anthony. We love you with the love of the Lord. And I know you know you came and got to different places, but you found your way in here. And I believe that that's divine appointment you know it's not a coincidence God has a way of by his spirit leading us to certain places just so we can hear certain things and I thank God for your testimony and for we're glad that you had a good time you know and, and you know hey the doors are open anytime you want to come back hey you're more than welcome <laughs> amen praise God I love it he said he's coming back let's give the Lord a clap offering for Mr. Anthony God bless you sir and we had a wonderful young lady as well I think she was her name is Anna Oh, she had to go to work. Anna from Liberia. So we're hoping we can see her again at some point. But thank you all for being here. Why don't we rise up as we receive the benediction. And don't forget after this, you know, for those who can, if you're not rushing to go somewhere, there's a little bit of something to munch on, right? We had some birthdays, so there's some cake or something. Just go back here. Let's have a time of fellowship. But let's get the blessings from the Lord. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 23, he says, Peace be to you, my brothers and sisters, and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with you all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with a love incorruptible. We love him because he first loved us. Go out and like our, our pastor said, you want to be blessed this week and highly favored? Go out there, honor God in everything you do. Everything you do, no matter how min minimal or small it is, it becomes meaningful when you have the right attitude. Honor God and number two, serve God others and you will indeed be blessed and highly favored all week and we hope to see you next Sunday same time 10 30 a.m. see you God bless you amen praise the Lord have a great week